I don't know what happened there. I just pulled the microphone out and stuck it back in the same hole again. Well, I, I, I had to join the meeting, not host the meeting. It was all very odd. It was like you'd already started without me. Oh, oh no, I was here. And I, <laughs> if you look in the Zoom group chat, I've written, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Could you hear me all the time? No, I wasn't here. I wasn't there. I was trying to get onto it. Oh. I could only get on by going to the Zoom website and then joining as a... Oh, so host. it wasn't my microphone at all then? No, no. Oh. Something, something very odd happening with Zoom. All right. Okay, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? All right. <laughs> Welcome to Own It, Your Business and Your Life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. spoken to Hawaii this morning. So oh, I've already spoken to New Zealand this morning. Is that oh, a coincidence? Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my client is mid evening for her, and she was having yes. dinner. Mid evening for mine. Yeah. Uh, yours was mid evening last night, though. Yeah, back in time, whereas you were uh, falling. Yes, I was. How interesting. The marvels of modern mentoring. Well, and I'm going to talk to you actually in this first section about something related to that. Oh, do you want to go first? No, you go first. Oh, all right then. Um, well, I've been very busy trying to work out what I want to do in my time because, as, you, as I reported last week on the podcast, I seem to have more of it than I imagined or seem to have in, in Greece. So this week I went, um, what did I do Saturday? I can't remember. I remember one day, unaccountably for me, I had to have an afternoon nap because <laughs> I'm waking up so early in the morning, you know, for sort of the light and the, and the traffic noise and everything that I was um, quite exhausted by three o'clock. So I had a little nap. But one day I went out with the teens, resolved never to do that again because <laughs> that, that ended up in um, the crown and anchor until 1.30 in the morning because they've got a garden. Now, two weeks ago I said, the crown and anchor that's a bit worrying and you went oh no we never go there anymore the kids don't work there we never go there. well we didn't start there we started at the waterside because it was such a lovely evening so what you're telling me is it's a pub crawl well it, it was a two pub pub crawl <laughs> i think it needs three to count as a crawl ah, okay we're making the rules up here but i hear what you say yeah i crawled home to bed at 1 30 yeah and there was uh, crawling and was involved <laughs> never to do that again <laughs> but felt okay in the morning. Sunday went off to a an all you can eat Indian buffet in Rustington. Very worried. Went to see Peter Hom, Alana, and little Alana, um, who as you know just came out to Greece. Do they do they live in Rustington? No, they live in Chichester, but it was halfway between us. And yes, it was, it was. It wasn't one of those ones I've been to once before where it was really really grim and all the food was in hot plates and you have to give it a good stir to get the hot stuff it was um tiny restaurant and the the food was absolutely delicious it was eight pound for all you can eat i only managed two helpings but um it was very welcome but the funny thing was phoebe lent me her car to go over there and phoebe's got an issue with her car that she's had had it she discovered it on the way home from somewhere up north with irving where they bought the car that's the hot knob is stuck on so you can't actually regulate the temperature inside. Could, the car. could be worse. Could be worse. It could be the cold knob that was. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so they both drove home, and it was only when they hit the motorway they realised they had to take their coats off, unwind the windows, <laughs> <laughs> and she's been through several long, tedious um, attempts to get a new knob and get it fixed. Um, but in the meantime, it was summer, so she said, "Oh well, I don't really worry because I just opened all the windows, and I don't go very far, to be fair. So the the, the heating doesn't really kick in till after a little." while but I can assure you as soon as I left Shoreham the heating kicked in and I was driving along and Phoebe's a tiny little thing so I had to move the um, seat forward a bit to reach the pedals even though um, it had been much more forward when she was driving it but then that meant because of my vast girth nowadays that the seat belt didn't stretch quite as far as I would have liked it so I'm driving leaning back rather because that's the only way I can get the seat belt to go around me 
baking hot, all the windows open, and th- being throttled rather by this seatbelt that had no more elastic give in it. So I and then and then my sat nav took me into um, Rustington Sainsbury's Park and Ride or Park, Park and Click and Collect or whatever you call it. So I had to ring Pete and say, "Well, I think I'm five minutes away, but I'm I'm rather hot and sweaty and flustered. So I'll be there as soon as I can." But we had a lovely time, and then I drove rather sweatily back to Shoreham. Uh, out to jazz on Tuesday night. Heather did two numbers. Sarah captured one of which on Facebook, so you can see that on my profile. I've you... seen it. It's marvellous. She is right. I'll tell you something. Her self-esteem and self-belief are not great, but when I when she sings, the audience, she was sort of last on the first her half to sing, because loads of other people were getting up as well. When she gets up to sing, no matter how much conversation noise there is in a room, it soon stops. It's quite astonishing. And do you know know what it made me think? I've been been thinking about this a lot. I think I saw the video yesterday. And we've done very well, all things considered, from a not very auspicious start, you and me. You know, we've done done well. We've done as best as we possibly could. Heather, although you can't see this necessarily – no, you can half, but you can't totally. You can in. She's achieved excellence. Yes, yeah, she has. Yeah. She's achieved excellence. She is an excellent vocalist. She's world class. Yeah. She is at the top yeah. of you know of how she's taken her talent to the top of her ability. And um, I know she when she does all those international singing gigs with choirs and things that she's highly highly regarded yes i know she's highly regarded and i know that we you think that we've underexploited her sort of album potential but when she gets up on the stage she made me think you've done very well judith but you're mediocre and heather is excellent (laughs) but you know what they say don't you in in fact it was in um ten thousand hours what was that outliers it's a comp. There is a, there is a. You can be achieve excellence by practice and diligence and doing the thing. And you can go past people who are more competent and more talented. Sorry, if you do that. And Heather has certainly done that. And she is at the top of her game. She's in the world's best choir. She she sings. Um, she's one of only eight people that Steve Reich will have to sing his stuff globally. And she could be a world class jazz singer. But it, there is this little thing that stops people and it's self-belief and inside chatter because we keep she's she's talking about she wants to do um a thing called the brighton sessions which would be small intimate jazz gigs with just her and one other musician in her living room and the technology's there for that and she would just put them onto youtube because every time she shares a video it goes it goes mad and she only didn't do her album justice because she lost two friends back to back and she yes. nursed, nursed them yes. both. Yes, I remember. So there were extenuating circumstances for why we backed off on the marketing on that. But um, And she is talking about doing a second album, to be fair. But uh, I think this jazz Brighton session thing would just go viral because of the quality of the singing. Everybody absolutely loves her singing. Um, but there's this negative voice in her head that says, oh, I'm too old, I'm not pretty enough. I'm, why would anyone listen to me? I'm past it. And that's what holds her back. And but what you, I've, I, <coughs> I don't think it's true, Hev. If you're listening, no, absolutely not true. No, she won't be listening. But um, it is, it's not true. Mm. And I think all it would take, as as getting up on the, uh, you know, on Tuesday, reminded her just how damn sh- good she is. Because I'm not joking. Pretty much every serious jazz buff in that room came up afterwards and said that was absolutely wonderful. So I think I think well, and you could see the respect of the excellent musicians playing around her as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think she should just push through the doubt, self doubts, and do it. And I think the feedback from the audience would be the thing that. And I think that's a good lesson for anyone who wants to do something in business and is scared to do it. Don't let yourself be the critic that holds you back. Why don't you just put it out there for the audience? And Scary V says, let the market decide. Mm. You know, just get it in front of enough people to get a, a viable bit of feedback from the market. And, and yeah. if everyone roundly ignores you, then then look for something else. But if they don't, yes. carry on. <laughs> so that was a wonderful Tuesday night. We had a lovely um, burger out as well. The, the, the jazz, I mean, it's just an ordinary sort of pub, but they do do excellent food. And they've got a good name for all different kinds of music. And then last night, I forced myself to go out to um, the Crabtree Inn in Shoreham, where I had heard on the grapevine, the Shoreham by Sea group on Facebook, that there was a poker game to be had. And I was a little bit trepidatious walking in there because it's not known as a 
very salubrious establishment. Not that I'm snobby about these things or anything. But, but I was welcomed by a very twinkly landlord who said, oh, it's not on tonight. Typically, you should come tonight because it's always on on Wednesdays, but it's not on tonight. And he didn't give me a reason. But he said, but you'll, you'll be most welcome if you come back next week because my wife is um, a player and she so you know that you won't be the only lady. And I thought, oh, that was nice. Yes, yes. <laughs> And then he promptly took my phone number and put me onto a WhatsApp group. So um, I was quite impressed with the landlord of the crab tree having such a good grasp of technology, although he did have to pass the pad over to a mate to take my phone number down. So right. now it's common knowledge in the crab tree what my phone number is. But well, might sure not necessarily be a bad thing. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been quite a lively week as you can hear yes what about yours well the lovely weather continues do you have lovely weather we do yes it's oh gorgeous. it is gorgeous and um i was left in charge of the two black labradors over the weekend as the family oh. went up to london and they thought they were going to a housewarming party of one of their daughters that turned out also to be a surprise um wedding marriage proposal up the shard oh, so no. she oh. not, uh, t- turned into quite a big party but they said gaily, they're quite chaotic compared to the Morgans, but it works. And they said gaily as they left, can you give Tiger, who's the older of the two, his medicine? Yes. Where will I find it? In the garage, right? So I'm going into the garage at mealtimes and I find the medicine and I look on the side of the box. There's a syringe there. One of the, the, the dad here is a doctor. There's a syringe and there's the medicine, but it doesn't say on the side of the bottle what the dose is. And I haven't been told. So I give Tiger his dinner and then I email London and say, you know, how many mils of this medicine is he supposed to have? 38, right? Okay. Just shy of 40, Judith. Yeah, it's okay. I'm an accountant. Um, <laughs> but then the, the girl dog started to behave oddly on Saturday afternoon like she was drunk she I thought there was something matter with her legs I thought she was wobbly oh, wobbly no. on her pins anyway so I so I emailed London I said somebody needs to phone me urgently I'm really worried about the other dog nobody phoned so I rang and of course they were in the middle of this thing that, that got a lot more exciting than they were expecting and 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 actually they gave me the the bums rush um they basically said stop being such an old lady she was having a bone when we left she's absolutely fine she's probably constipated don't worry of course when they got back on sunday night and she'd i actually saturday night i didn't sleep because i thought when i went in to wake them up in the morning she'd probably be dead and then how would i tell them that because i'd already had the text that said so and so got engaged you know so um i didn't sleep on saturday night and i went into where the dogs sleep on sunday morning and she lifted her head off her bed and she um wagged her tail at me and she ate her breakfast which she didn't do the night before so I knew she wasn't going to die yeah. but when they when they got back they said oh no you're right Judith she's walking sideways and falling over and then the next morning they took her to the dog to the to the vet she'd had a stroke no yes oh that's awful it is awful now a stroke in a dog is not nearly as bad as in a human being and the vet could tell just by looking in her eyes and I kept looking at her eyes and thinking is there something that matter with your eyes as well anyway I thought I thought I said, first of all, I thought it was her legs or her knees. And then um, then I thought the next morning, well, perhaps it's balance. What would affect your balance? And apparently the telltale sign is the walking sideways because that's one side of your body, obviously. Yeah, and like she that, was yeah. hovering at the tops of steps and looking at me plaintively and saying, I don't want to go down here, Judith. And, and, and I really, I was quite pleased that I was vindicated. And then on Monday morning after the vet, the boy came round to explain to me what had happened. And then they, uh, anyway, well, I'll tell you. So, um, I had a very nice five-star review on Trusted House Sitters from somebody I looked after their cat for a week in July, only two months after the event. And I felt that things had gone well and that I'd left them some nice public feedback, but I'd got nothing in return for them and I didn't press them. And this was when I was in Suffolk. And this week, two months after the event, she put up a thing that said, Judith was a wonderful sitter for us. She looked after our home and our cat so well that Gracie was very relaxed and sleeping when we returned. Judith is an excellent communicator from before the sit when we were making arrangements up until when we returned. I would not hesitate in recommending Judith. So apart from Kitten Gates, I've got a now full set of five-star reviews on Trusted House Sitter, <laughs> which is quite good. But it's also quite nice to be, the thing I liked about that was that she picked up the things I like to be thought good at. You know, I always say that, which is yeah. when you get a um, testimonial where somebody picks the things that you like to think you're good at. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, then I went on to have a bumper Tuesday. So this is leading up to the Hawaii, New Zealand thing. Um, and I got lots done, including three phone calls. Now, I never make phone calls or I've received phone calls. I had a phone call at nine o'clock in the morning and at 10 o'clock in the morning and one at lunchtime. I'm so unprepared for phone calls that in the third one, which was quite important because I was giving a reference 
to somebody who's becoming a foster mother, a foster parent. The battery ran out halfway through. <laughs> I did uh, some online shopping. I did. I watched a 45-minute video about which more later. I watched the Great Mortgage Swindle. I did a client. I did my brain training. I did one client's check-in. I did three mid-month nudges to clients to book in. I did that reference for a friend. I worked my phone and computer so hard they both ran out of battery. It was a very satisfying day, followed by an invitation to supper up the big house. And what I did that Tuesday, which was the hardest job of all, was I'd spent some time grappling with this international clocks thing because the clocks are about to move. And I thought I'd just share this with you. New Zealand moves its clocks on the 29th of September. Uh. Australia on the 6th of October. Us on the 27th of October and the USA on the 3rd of November. And that means that there's a gap between all of those. So New, New Zealand's a month ahead. And in the gap, instead of being, so what happens in, because two of those countries are in the southern hemisphere that move in the opposite direction to us, it means that at the moment, Australia is nine and 11, Australia is nine and New Zealand 11 hours ahead. When we move, they will have moved three weeks or four weeks ahead of us. We will be 11 and 13. So actually it goes from a very difficult time difference to an impossible time difference. And you end up speaking to them then on a different day from the day you're on. And what the point is, in the middle, when New Zealand moves three weeks before we do, they're 12 ahead, not 13. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, and although the online booking calendars translate to the local thing, I have to understand the difference. So I can offer time slots that work with that, if that makes sense. Which is why you and I have been coaching early this morning, because you've been doing Hawaii, which is on a different day to you. And I've been doing New Zealand, where whatever day it is today is already finished. And I thought, this isn't good. They should, I mean, thank heavens for the brain training, Nicola, because actually that would that would defeat most people. Well, it defeats me on a regular Quite. basis. I can't Quite. begin to work it out. No. So, yeah. And that whole thing At the very Australia. least, it should be synced, shouldn't it? And, the, you know, the thing about Australia is, you know, it depends whether they're in one side of Australia or the other. Yeah. And and they've got, the same with America. They've all got multiple zones. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. Now, and here's an interesting fact, which I've told you before, but it might be worth repeating because it's. I think it's a useful trivial pursuit question there is one state in america that doesn't move its clocks really just doesn't play the whole game and i think it's arizona i will double check that for you one state says no we're not playing that ridiculous game <laughs> so they I know. isn't that brilliant isn't that brilliant i love that I love that well, anyway. yeah i can't even begin to imagine what impact that would make well they just stay the same and they let the world move around them which is yeah. actually a lovely laid back perspective on life. Well, tell me <laughs> Don't have clocks in the casinos anyway. I'm so. just going to say one thing about Rustington. When my parents, before my father died, and he died in 92, he thought it would make financial sense to retire from London uh, to the South Coast because it would be cheaper and they'd get more money for their London house. And Rustington was their place of choice. And my brother forbade it on the basis that it was God's waiting room. Well, that's very true, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and funnily enough, recent, recently on my shortlist, I've had a couple of places in Rustington at times, and I thought, I can't go there, my brother will ban it. No, it is lovely. It's oh, lovely good. in Rustington, but it's any, anywhere from Worthing over to Chichester is, is God's way to go. Yeah, that's true, yeah. As soon as you start getting close to Brighton, it starts, you know, the, the age starts dropping dramatically. Yeah, and you have to take drugs. But uh, I fact, quite yeah. fancy, uh, fancy a bit of Chichester myself. <laughs> Tell me what has fueled your fire. Well, I had a very interesting conversation this week that's fueled my fire quite dramatically. Um, I've interviewed a chap called Michael Wilding a couple of times. He's a ex actor, ex shoe designer, horse racing pundit, and someone who's been very successful with creating a system to help other people to try and work out what the horses are going to do. And somehow his clients get a success, so he makes money. And he's a wonderful person. He's just got, he got married a few years ago. He, he had a baby and his boy, little boy had hydrocephalus. Hydroencephalitis. Is That's it. Like that? yeah, it's water on the, water water on the, brain. the brain. Yeah. 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 Which, which was a death sentence in the olden days and is now quite dangerous, but they put a shunt in to drain, let the brain drain. And, until I think either the child's old enough for an operation or whatever. Well, anyway, this little boy's had four stents. And what I didn't realise was that he'd had a second child who um, who I assumed was fine, but actually turns out to have had the same issue. Oh. And it was a 5% chance. And um, anyway, so he, 
so I've interviewed him a couple of times about, you know, success and, and internet marketing because he's a really big in, Infusionsoft user and he showed me things you could do with Infusionsoft that other internet marketers only gasp with admiration. Mm. But um, but uh, I interviewed him, I contacted him again. I said, how about a catch-up? Because I've was i been resisting doing interviews again and I don't know why. And, I, and then I, even, I put out a thing on a podcast guest uh, recommendation newsletter thing and I started getting all these replies from people who sounded, you know. Yes, you said, hard. but you said you had to do some sorting. I realised it's not about the sorting, it's about the fact that I'm totally disinterested in interviewing anyone I don't know. Oh. And you... then I thought, well, I'm also totally disinterested in talking about to anyone about stuff, just stuff, business stuff. And then I popped, I, so I sent... Um, I, so what I, does that, sorry, what does that leave? People well, you know talking about what? Well, hang on a second. I'm, I'm coming to it. Okay. At the same time as putting this thing out on this pod, podcast guest request newsletter, I put the thing out into some of my private group, just saying, you know, I'm looking for people to interview, even though I've interviewed you before, I'd be interested in a catch-up, blah, blah, blah. And Michael contacted me and he said, um, would you be interested in talking about mental health and entrepreneurship? And I said, oh, yes, God, yeah, really? So we had a very, 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 very fascinating conversation in which Michael was extremely open about the fact that he's had a sort of mini breakdown recently because the stress of having um, two children who were born not very well, his grandfather, who was very much a stalwart for him, who he'd go to. His died. grandfather or his father? His grandfather. Yes, okay. And then, and then very quickly after that, his father died. And yeah. he really didn't, he said, I just ploughed on, you know, I just carried yeah. on. I'm the man of the house, I have to yes. do. Uh, yes, yes. Wife's an actress too. Well, actually, but, we all yeah. have to plough on, don't we? We do, yes. Yeah. And, and so out of that conversation, we talked about how he coped, how he was having panic attacks, how he coped with the panic attacks, how he how he's now restructured his business. Oh, he also went into business with the construction people who'd renovated his house because he was so impressed with what they did and he thought he could bring a lot of marketing chops to the table. So they went into partnership and then when he had these bereavements and a second baby with hydroencephalitis, yeah. He just fell apart, basically. And he said, the worst thing is, you know in your head that it's ridiculous that you're having panic attacks. There's nothing to be panicking about. He said, but your body sort of takes over and you yeah. just don't feel in control anymore. And it's really awful. And I went through this six months where I could barely get out of bed. And on the days I could get out of bed, it was like, I don't, it can't even bear to open the computer, you know. And so he said, my racing business, online racing business was going down the pan. The guy who I couldn't be in partnership with anymore is now suing me. And my kids are still sick. You know, it's, it's just yeah. really difficult. He said, so he said, I'm, I am coming out of it. I am seeing a therapist and I'm meditating every day. And so we talked about the coping strategies and it was a really, really interesting conversation, a really emotionally honest conversation. And um, when I finished, I thought that was so good and so interesting. And I really want to talk to more people about this. And it, the idea came to me that it wasn't, it warranted more than just going on to my normal clicks and leads podcast because it wasn't about marketing at all. So I've um, started a new podcast, Judith, called Resilience. And I'm going to interview people about tough times and what caused them, what brought, how they got through them, how their life and business has changed as a result of them. And I just suddenly thought, I'm much more interested in talking about that now than I am talking about Facebook marketing strategies or... So you're more interested in life, in life than business. I thought, okay, let's see if there's a podcast called Resilience. There isn't. So I knocked up a bit of uh, artwork and then I took my origin story that I'd recorded just recently and turned that into a podcast episode, put Michael's second, and I'm now going through and, and trying to find any other recordings I might have that would fit into that bracket. Okay. And then I'm now on the lookout for people to interview and I'm interested in business people who've had tough, tough times, whether they're business wise or personal and how they got through it, how, what tools they use and um, how we... you're trying, you're trying to learn something again. Am I? Oh, well, I, I think that's one of your ways of learning how to, um, whether whatever you're going through is to interview other people who have. I think I've been through that. Yes, I think you have, yes. I've come out the other side. But well, I've, I don't think you've come completely out the other side because it wouldn't be interesting to you if you had. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying, at least don't take this as, no, this is an observation, not a criticism. I think we're interested in things until we've cracked them. And I think you're still interested in this topic. And no, no, no I mean, it's a very useful topic because 
as we say often on here, and indeed was covered earlier in my day today, you know, life isn't as easy as it was. I think, I think it's because I'm not interested in talking about tactics and, you know, every single bit of coaching is always around the bigger issues, isn't it? Because people know what the tactics are. They just don't take, they don't use them because there's something bigger stopping them. Either they're, you know, talking about Heather, you know, they, they've got negative self chatter going on or, or they, most people could go out and find out what tactics they need to use tomorrow to be a success. But the reason they don't is internal. And I think that's why I'm, I'm interested in the bigger pictures rather than the tactics. And I can't bring myself to talk about search engine optimization and how to set up a website and, you know, all that stuff anymore because there's so many other people s- s- teaching and selling the tactics. I think the bigger picture is more interesting to me now. I hate to say it, but I actually didn't even consider. And interestingly, you haven't, you haven't. Go on. I haven't what? No, uh, you finish. You- you finish the thought and then I'll... I'll the thought is that small, I, think. I was thinking I might change com slightly to be more, dare I say it, life coaching orientated. Well, the word I would use to describe the work I do around the areas that you've just talked about, which is pretty much 100% of my work, and you didn't use the word I would use, but you're talking about emotions. Yes. Feelings. Yes. Feelings. <laughs> and actually, for me, the most interesting part of our podcast is when you talk about your feelings quite often. And um, I'm going to tell you a story and what's fueled my fire about somebody who contacted me to talk about her feelings. Yeah, because feelings are a symptom of thoughts, aren't they? That's what I've learned in my psychology media. Well, I think they go round in I th- I think they go round in circles is the point, unless you've got an exit route, whereas your tactics has got a bit of beginning, a middle and an end. No wonder you can't keep talking about it. And you said something really interesting last week. You said, um, I'm just going to send everybody to um the whatever it was training that you're in love with because yeah. nobody could do it better. Well I, I certainly couldn't. I couldn't do you know they're a billion dollar company. No. They've got the resources. Well, to do the it best. also doesn't need to be done better. <laughs> no, because there's it someone. Do, else it doesn't. Doing it, yeah. Sorry, we've got we've got a yeah. Sorry, we've got a bit of a delay again, which doesn't come out on the recording oddly, but does it affects my 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 experience. It doesn't need to be done better than they're doing it, does it? Yeah. So that's what fueled my fire this week. What fueled yours? Okay, so a nice woman contacted me via my Facebook page, and I think she may even have found me via the podcast, or perhaps vice versa i'm not going to say her name she's originally from the far east and now she lives in europe she told me her age and the ages of her children and that's all information i always love to have and and she's young and they are nearly adults so this is very good timing for her she told me what she likes and what she hopes for in starting her own business and she said it wasn't an original or a brilliant idea, but she wanted to start something based around what she loves. And again, I'm not going to tell you what that is. She said she felt fear, worry, and uncertainty. And she asked me, should she just try, or did she need to decide upon a business model first? And I gave her some free advice under what I call a challenge annika, which is I said, why don't you just do this? Start small, um, sell a hundred of them, and see what you learn by doing that. And she thanked me, and she said, I'm buying a copy of your book, and I'll look forward to talking to you some more. And I thought, all very satisfactory, which is, you know, she was mired in this fear, worry and uncertainty. And I was able to say, just try like a sample of this before you go hook, line and sinker and give up your day job and throw resources and business plans at it. Just try a sort of, what do we call it in the e-myth? Um, a head office prototype. Just try a prototype. Just try a hundred of them and see if that's easy or hard or less fun than you thought or more fun than you thought. Or now you can see how to scale it or it's never going to make any money. You'll give it up or it'll always be your hobby, whatever. I just made it easy for her. Just do this tiny little bite side chunk. And she went, oh, yeah, I can do that. And off she went, happy and empowered. And, you know, that was so easy for me. So much of what we do is easy when you look in at other people's lives. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> looking out of your own life is quite hard and messy yes that's why i journal every day because it gets yeah. out of my head and onto a paper where i see how ridiculous it is <laughs> indeed shall we move on to focus of the week yes right so uh we've got a listener guest today and she's uh, a, a recent 
podcast um, listener in uh, 2019, and she's been very keen on the Abraham work and very active in our Facebook group. She's in Australia, did I say that? Yes. And uh, she's written a book called Get Off the Bench, and where she lives in Australia, she lives with her other half and with donkeys and cows, and she told us that at age 50, she got fed up with people poo-pooing her ideas and she resolved never to be put off again. And we know that feeling of when you, you make a resolution, which is, I don't care what anybody says or does, I'm just going to crack on. And she created a project which was wonderful, uh, but she described it to you and I as a failure for a couple of reasons that the listener will hear her explain. I don't think it was a failure. I think it was a sort of clearing the way. But then she was asked to talk at an International Women's Day event, which led her to creating a project called Girls with Hammers, which is a marvellous, marvellously named concept. And then she wrote this second book, which she talked to us about called Get Off the Bench, which led to workshops about kickstarting your idea. Hello, Kerin. This is Kerin Vaughan, our listener guest this morning. Kerin, um, you're going to talk to us about Get Off the Bench, which I know is your most recent book, perhaps your first book, I'm not sure. Nick and I both have copies. Neither of us have read it, so we're not going to... No spoiler alerts, obviously, but um, we can't wait to hear what this is all about. Tell us a little bit about you, and then in your own, say, a couple of minutes, and then your own time, move on to your topic, and then we'll, we'll join in when we can't contain our excitement anymore. Okay. okay. Well, thanks for having me. It's, it's wonderful to be joining you, lovely ladies. Um, a little bit about me. So I live in Australia. Um, I'm 56 and that's very poignant when we get to it. Um, basically, I live on a farm. I've got donkeys and cows and I absolutely love my life. But prior to 50, I think, uh, you know, I was letting everybody else tell me what to do. And every time I come up with ideas, I'm a bit of an ideas person, everybody would poo-poo that, you know, you can't do this, you give me every reason why I can't do it. And then uh, when I was 50, I decided, no, enough's enough. I'm not going to listen to anybody anymore. So I wrote the book Magnificent Kids. So that was actually my first book. Get Off the Bench was my second. Magnificent Kids is about 23 superheroes around the world who were doing world-changing projects and I was very inspired by their stories so I put them together and that led me then to uh, starting up the one not-for-profit One Planet Classrooms uh, because we had a book launch and a guy from Africa saw the book and uh, that's a whole story in itself. Uh, no, I stop, decided, stop, 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 not stop. Not-for-profit. I couldn't hear what you said the not-for-profit was called. One Planet Classrooms. One, one Planet, planet yep. Classrooms. Lovely, yeah. thank you. Gorgeous. So I had a book launch and a guy and I had a picture of photo of me with another lady and she had a friend in Africa. He said, I want the book. I sent it to him. Then he said, I want to do uh, a magnificent class. And I said, well, how about if I Skype with your kids? And that was great. And then he said, I don't have a laptop. And I said, oh, great. So I, I decided to get him one. I put on Facebook and next thing I've got 30. And I thought, well, I'd better start up a business. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> and, um, and then I said, you know, I said, what if I get one of the kids in the book to Skype with your class? So that was great. He, and then I said, oh, I know, I've got the answer. How about your class in, in Africa, Skype with a class in Australia and they can learn about each other. Oh, cool. And that was awesome. Next thing I know, I've got 45 schools registered oh, cool. and uh, we had a very difficult time shipping computers over to Uganda, very difficult. Uh, so I failed, I, I completely failed because we can't get computers into Uganda, even despite the fact that I did get 20 in. Uh, the kids are in bed in Uganda when they're awake in Australia, so yeah. fail again. Third fail is I sent computers to a country that 95% of them don't even have power. So, yeah. you know, talk about failure, the failure queen. However, I think that's a really good thing because I learned that a lot of kids were dying from drinking dirty water and a lot of girls were being sexually assaulted going to get water so I kind of just reframed it and redirected it and so then now we do water tanks and sanitary pads and that kind of thing we've got 180 kids in our sponsorship program so that's you know turned a failure into a massive success yeah, good for you um and then I last year I was doing an international women's day event and I stood up in front of uh, 300 women and I said I will launch a purposeful female focused initiative got down off the stage and thought, oh, shit, <laughs> now, now I've got to do it. And so uh, Girls With Hammers was born and that's a women's empowerment uh, business and what we do is we run conferences and workshops and, you know, that type of thing to empower women. And then as sort of as a culmination of all of the things that I've done, uh, I wrote the book Get Off the Bench and that was by accident as well. I was talking at a conference and the guy running it said, can you please uh, run a workshop? 
about people starting the kickstarting projects and me being me said, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell them. But anyway, so I did put it together and I made a sort of a cheat sheet and then I told them that I would email that to them. And when I came home, I started typing more and next thing I had a book. So that's that's that part of it. That's to where we're up to. But um, the Get Off the Bench basically is a book about kickstarting your idea and it could be a personal goal that you've got. It could be a business idea or it could be a community project. But what I've found is that, you know, we live in a world where we've just got all these inputs and everybody is just so exhausted and so bombarded with everything and they've got these great ideas but no opportunity for output and and just some some people have got some brilliant ideas in there. So the whole idea of the book was to structure it so that people could uh, get their idea and step by step unfold it and think about all the critical components about, you know, starting up an idea. And so what if what we've done started doing is running workshops and it's been incredible. People have f- found three to four hours to sit down quietly in a group of like-minded people who have got the same challenges outside of that. And, you know, then they start to put their idea onto paper and start to brainstorm it. And, you know, we always have tears. It's, it's an incredible sort of it's a very freeing workshop. They realise that um, when we go through the whys, you know, why is this important to you and go down all the whys, we usually get to the bottom why and it's generally something to do with a challenge they had it in childhood um, that they want to unknowingly want to correct now. And uh, there's so many tears but so much uh, support, moral support. It's absolutely beautiful. And so then I'm also working on some corporate workshops as well and they're sort of a much different angle where people in the business, in the business, you know, business arena can either bring to life their idea that they've got outside of work, which, which brings them into work a much, much happier person and much more productive, or working on an idea together that the workplace has implemented, but everybody's not on the same page, hmm. or to, um, you know, to, to kickstart uh, an initiative in, within the business and get everybody working together on this one, one thing together. So it's, uh, it's grown legs that is massive. But uh, for me personally, uh, my ideal world is where everybody gets off the bench, everybody's living a life that's true to them, living their dreams. Uh, when, you, when you're like that, you've got better well-being and you're happier, you know, you're more positive, you contribute to other people. And I just want to see a world where there's so much kindness and um, generosity and, you know, where everybody's happy and living their life. I, I might be a dreamer and, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with John Lennon here, you know, I might be imagining things, but mm-hmm. uh, that's that's the life I want to live and that's the world I want to see. And um, I guess I just keep doing things that I think yeah. contribute to that. And You're an agent of change. I've got my first question. May I go with it? Yes. Do you think the time simply was right for this in Australia or is it that infectious energy of yours that's beating them into submission? <laughs> I think it's a bit of both. No, I think it's, <laughs> I, I, I think people are definitely stuck. You know, they're really, really stuck and unhappy. We're seeing a lot of, a lot of depression. A lot of people are just questioning their lives at the moment. But I do think that I've always been told that, that I've got the ability to just get people getting up believing in themselves and making people feel really safe so I guess I've got that to my advantage that's yeah. you know really good now you tantalized us in the beginning by saying being 56 had a yes. something yes poignant well that's right because I it took me until I was 50 and mm. to to stop listening to other people yes. and to stop Stop being such a yes. So not a people pleaser because I've never been that, but I've always let people, you know, make me doubt myself and, mm. and listen to them. That'll never work. That'll never work. Mm. And so now I'm fifty six. So I guess the point of that is, in the last six years, I've achieved massive results, you know, and and massive world changing things, and have changed so many people's lives in just six years. And all it took was for me to say, enough's enough. Yeah. Just. I'm not going to listen to people anymore. Yeah. I know that I can do it and I'm just going to do it. And I, oh, by the way, I don't believe in proving people wrong. I just don't think that's a, you know, I think you're doing things for the wrong reason. Yes, but no it was, need. I agree. No, yeah. It was just time for me. So um, that's the 
part about 56. Yeah. I just think everybody gets that point, don't they, where they go, enough is enough, and I'm going to do it my way yeah. now. I, and I think you hit it in your 50s. I think you, yeah. you start to look at death starts to, you start to look at that door of death and go, holy dooly, I'm not sure when that's coming. <laughs> I, I better do something and everybody else can go to buggery. <laughs> I, from a marketing point of view, you've, you've accidentally stumbled on something really strong here because, you know, when you say get off the bench, everyone in America, Australia, England, we all know what you mean. It means stop playing on the sidelines, yeah. stop, you know, stop sitting down stand up do something take action we, you know, it's just a fantastic expression well done thank you thank you yeah and um you promised that the international women's day to do the thing that turned out to be girls with hammers but the get off the bench is that all women as well no it's not okay. no we, we we do find that we get mostly women but yes. it's not it's not no, uh, we, because actually who says only women deserve happiness i think there are a lot of miserable men in corporate life too aren't there Oh, so do I. Yeah. yeah. And, and even Girls With Hammers, we do conferences and we, uh, we have all women turn up, but uh, it's not, we don't restrict men from coming, but I don't think they'd enjoy it. But, uh, um, but we do have a, the DJ, the, the guy who does our music is a guy and the guy who does our sound is a guy. Yeah. And, and we love them. Love yeah. them to be. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, loved I, mean, what I, said, I loved what you said about um, going into corporate life and helping people to develop ideas whether that's internally or externally because when they if they if if people people seek meaning uh, especially at this time of life and if they've got something outside their corporate job that gives them meaning they don't necessarily have to have it in in corporate life they can just go to work to earn money yeah. to fund yeah. their life that gives yes. them meaning outside the work you know yes. it's, it's yeah. a great thing and, and they're happier. They go to work much happier. Yeah, and, and so therefore any employer is a bit short-sighted if they don't see that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how are you find? Is, does word spread? I mean, I love the story about, you know, you're, you, someone wanted a book and somebody else saw it. I mean, that's just a real synchronicity kind of story. I love those so much. Do you find yeah. that word of mouth spreads itself or do you do any active marketing to, uh, you know, obviously the events have to be marketed and, and that sort of does marketing I suppose for it doesn't it and then it's a movement isn't it it's, it, it's a movement where the, the participants yeah. share it yeah that, that's what we're hoping at, at the moment it's still quite um local you, you know we have um a, a really big local following and we're trying to get it f spread further but uh it's really only Facebook we keep saying that we, we need to find a you know, better marketing tool than Facebook. And so, you know, Nicola, we might be on your heels soon. But anyway, I, I keep saying that, but I told Judith that too, but I still haven't got time to do it. Why, why, <laughs> now tell me why you think you need a better marketing tool than Facebook if it's working. Um, well, we, we because Facebook controls us. You know, that's yeah. the, when yeah. we try to put in um, who we're going to market it to, you know, we find that sometimes that just doesn't work at all. And yeah. Yeah, I just think Facebook's algorithms uh, suit themselves. They're yeah. not always yeah. kind. Yeah, you're yeah. right, yeah. Do you yeah. have websites outside Facebook for, for yeah, absolutely. girls with hammers? And Can you tell us which one yes, you I want do. people to go, which ones would you like our listeners to go looking at? I'd like them to go to girlswithhammers.com.au. .com .au, yep. And getoffthebench.com.au. Lovely, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there, there is something that you could do straight away, which is to get the dot coms if you can. Well, I'm Nicola, sure. does, does, does she? Does yeah. she? Does well, she? Surely Australia is a big enough market, and why wouldn't we embrace her Australianness? Well, I agree, but the problem is that whenever anyone types a URL, they're, they're, they're not going to know to type the dot au. Well, I don't think that's true. When you say everyone, you're thinking of everyone in Europe. No, I'm Don't thinking there's America as well. It's America. Yeah, America. And, and it would just help if you had the dot coms. And, and she you can't I get think, them, she's saying. No, I can't get them. No, they were already taken. So. Oh, what, what a shame. Yeah. Never mind. You'll have to work with what you got then. Yeah. Um, yes. I imagine Unfort <laughs> much bigger ideas. I mean, Australia, uh, sorry, America and, and England would love this, surely. Well, yeah. I'm happy to come. Yes, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, going to, I'm going to America in... Uh, October, so hopefully I can do a bit of work over there as strategic well. So that's to speak at a conference. Strategic partners in each in each territory. Yeah. And, and that okay. Would, yeah, because then you'd have someone, someone you know, someone who who perhaps is going home from Australia or or, or retiring, you know, somebody who's, who gets your everything and t wants to take it abroad. Uh, ambassadors, you know, I suppose. Yep. Yep. 
Well, okay. you know, Thank effectively you. we are, but because she joined our peer group and reached out to us. Yeah. So she's, yeah. she's a natural at this, actually. Yeah. Yeah, get on as many female orientated podcasts as you can. That that'll, be, that'll work. Because okay, you're, you're a natural at it. You're a natural. And um, the, the book is which came first? You've written the book and then started the business, or the other way around? I got confused there. Uh, you mean get off the bench? Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I wrote the book first and then started the business. the business. So, is it important to market that book as a way of people finding their way to the business, or or will they? find the business and then buy the book because they, you see what I'm saying? It's probably at the moment they'll find the business and then buy the book. Yeah, I think um, it might be. Yeah, yeah, it's like the book yeah. of the program, isn't it, in a way? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm kind of just using the book as a giant business card, you know, to get yeah. the other stuff off the ground. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But I've only just had it out for a couple of months and I've already sold about six in Italy, which I, I have no clue why, <laughs> and, uh, and a few in America. So That's good. I, I don't know why Italy. <laughs> The book is your, your calling card for getting onto podcasts and getting speaking engagements as well. Um, and, yeah. and it might be a good idea to have an Instagram account where you literally just share inspirational quotes you know, from the book and other inspirational quotes about, around this topic. And that would probably build an Instagram following quite quickly, um, especially if you use in, um, inspirational quotes on topic from celebrities, for example, with a picture of the celeb in the background. That's what I'd be doing okay. if I were you. Okay. I was about to set up an Instagram account tonight, so yeah. perfect. Well, That's what I'll be doing. Now, Thank do you. you. Do you know what I'm seeing as well? Uh, you're going to a mashup of the best principles of Magnificent Kids, i.e. One Planet Classrooms, applied to the material from Get Off the Bench. And even girls, right? Oh. So you know, you could, I could be in your one planet classroom if, if I wanted to learn the principles of get off the bench, and it could be kids, or it could be any people of any age. So you don't have to travel for your workshops unless you want to. Although I think your your energy is marvelous, but you can reach quite a lot of people. You, I was, I got goosebumps at the at the magnificent kids thing. Um, maybe you could get people earlier than they don't have to wait until they're fifty to be poo pooed. <laughs> That's I don't my know. Plan. Oh, yeah, but I think you could have world domination from the donkeys. From the donkeys, you know the what I'm saying is now. you don't. Need, yes, from, <laughs> you, you, you know that might be. There's just something in that. You know the the superheroes and the one planet classrooms and the, I built this from failure. That's a really inspiring, compelling message at the beginning. And I got the goosebumps over the you know, the um, abundance of that. And I'm just thinking that the word could spread very easily and inexpensively using those principles. I, I get what you said totally about time zones. I'm working with America at the moment, which means I'm awake all night and I want to sleep all day. But, it, but, <laughs> but there's something in there, isn't it? There? there are friendlier time zones to Australia that you could reach yeah. with the donkeys outside the window. And That's the, right. Yeah. The other thing is to get off the bench and the, uh, it, all of that could be different um, learning um, zones within the one planet yes. classroom. So the one planet classroom is the brand for the learning, but the the you know get off the bench is one. Um, Supersonic kids is another one, and what's yeah. the other one? Girls with hammers. Girls with hammers. Yeah, yeah. So could, be. could be. Yeah, three threads within the learning environment. And you know, I watched this um, uh, crypto trader, and at the end, he always shares a video of his every single video he puts on YouTube. At the end, he shares videos of his ducks and his chickens and his goats <laughs> and his, you know, and, and really that's the ultimate thing, isn't it? But we're all looking for a way. It's humanizing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, leading yeah. happier lives. Less. I also think you're going to have to have one of those wacky names like Chief Encourager because there's something about your vibe, <laughs> yes. isn't it? It, it? It's that's what you know. When you said that it, it, there are tears because you discover there's something at the root of it. Well, it's exactly your story, which is I got sick to death of people poo-pooing my ideas, so I set yeah. myself as somebody who encourages people in their ideas chief coach yeah, yeah exactly. no i wouldn't use the word coach because it's a turn off yeah, but I, the, mean, yeah. Yeah, I, I would i would use other language aussie language in actually context, yeah i was thinking in the context of a sports thing but you're right it's it's not it's not a good word chief i think it works in that context for americans perhaps but i think she's you know she's um i don't know she's your dynamic and your energy at 56 is impressive and uh, I think that's what makes the project appealing and I don't think that's a surprise. Chief Inspire. Oh, thank you. Chief Inspire. <laughs> Something like that you know don't be afraid to use 2020 and onwards type language don't 
you, I'm, I'm sure you're not afraid, actually. Afraid of anything? <laughs> <I don't think>. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared of things, but I have courage. I think courage is so so important. It's, yes. And do you know the yeah. word means heart, doesn't it? It's got at, it, at the core of the word courage is cur, which means heart. Cur. Yeah, that's so my like, like um, cur, CO, yes, in French, the French core of that word means courage. If you look it up, you'll see all of the languages that have used what courage really means, which is lovely, I think. Hmm. Nice. Oh, thank you. Well, you've totally inspired my morning. And as a first interview, it's been oh. an absolute joy. So we've got three more, but now we've got the energy to go through them, Karen, because of your, <laughs> your vibe is just amazing, <laughs> particularly at seven o'clock at night. Is it seven? What time is it with you? Uh, 6.30. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for, for kickstarting this series for us. It's great. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Have a lovely absolute evening. Absolute pleasure. No worries. Thank, Thank you so you. much. It's been great Karen. talking to you. Yeah. Too. See you Bye. soon, darling. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Ta-da. Great. Well, I don't know about you, Judith, but I found that very energetic and inspiring. I really I think that. I think she's a good woman and she's you can tell she's a good woman because as soon as she found the podcast and started actively listening, she was actively in the Facebook group. She was actively in the Abraham exper- experiment. She's a she's a, you know, hello, I'm over here in Australia and it's like got off a to a good start with her, knew her straight away, an active participant. Yeah, nice. Nice. Now tell me about your word of the week. It's refocus. Okay. It, because I've, I've been dallying, as you know, with my money gym project, getting it back up and running and um, operational and ready to, to sell. And I've also been... I've managed to get some Facebook ads rolling to um, the front end of it, which is a bit of a miracle in itself. But I feel ready now to come back to my core thing because I've been sort of having a little bit of an unfocused month and I've just been journaling a lot every day. And in fact, I watched a video yesterday that was editing for this whole um, uh, resilience project. And I thought there was something that the chap in it said that really made me start writing again about what do I really want to do? Because there's so many things I could do and I still go round and round in circles on what long term I really want to do. And I thought, then I, I wasn't getting anywhere with that. I'd listed out all the things I could do and I, you know, now I'm back, I feel much more energised, but what do I focus on? And then I thought, so let's, in fact, I said in my journal, so let's start from the other direction. What do I love to do? What am I in the flow? And then how can I then monetize that? And I wrote down, I love podcasting, I love speaking, and I love mentoring people through the Clicks and Leads Academy. And I love writing, but only when inspired. I don't want to have to do it. So, you know, I don't want to do medium or anything like that. So then I came back to, I want to just attract 100 Clicks and Leads Academy clients. Just 100. That's all it'll take. And so now that's what I'm refocused on between now and Christmas. And the thing that the chap said in the interview was, all successful people work out what they want, what they want to do to get it, and then what they need to do to achieve that successfully. And they don't get distracted. They don't get discouraged. They don't think of the failures or the obstacles. They just get on with it. And I thought, that's what I've got to do. So what do I need to get on with now to attract 100 Clicks and Ease Academy clients in the next three months? Okay. Can I just ask a question about the Resilience podcast? Is it live yet? And if so, could you send me a link so I can put it in the show? Yes, it's it's resiliencethepodcast.com. Just send me, is it on iTunes or something like that? It's it's not yet, but it's on Anchor. Send me me some sort of linky thing later. Okay, we'll do. Right. Uh, yes. So my word is unbelievable because I binged on a series on Netflix over the weekend called that. And I realized while I was watching the program that it was a double entendre because some of the story hinges on one of the victims being regarded as a crime procedural thing, being regarded as unbelievable and therefore un- an unreliable witness in court. But actually her part in the larger story itself, which for me was the context of the title, is that the whole story is something you don't want to believe goes on in our world, even though you know it does. And sometimes we say unbelievable. And what that means is it's not unbelievable because we've just heard about it and it's a fact. (laughs) But we are trying to process how we come to terms with it. So I realised it it had a double meaning, which to me was quite interesting in a way. I want to watch that. It sounds good. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Right. Project updates? Yes. 
just to let you know, the podcast has just topped 120,000 downloads. Mm, cool, lovely. And we are on day 19, as many downloads for September as we did in the entire of August. Okay, that's very good. VG, yeah. we're back. We're, we're back indeed. Um, mm. As I say, Money Gym pro- Project's pretty much there. I'm just running traffic to it now and finding out, you know, the conversion numbers. And that's pretty much it for my project's updates. Okay, when I told you I watched a 45 minute video on Tuesday, um, and this wasn't what I had in mind last week, but I'm trialing a new health product, which I already buy, and I've been buying it for a couple of months. And obviously it comes with the attendant business opportunities that it always does. And I, I've always liked network marketing as a concept. I don't have any icky issues with it. And I'm not, I'm certainly not telling you that I'm doing it because the product is great. I even managed to watch and get excited by the 45 minute video. And I talked to a friend who's using the product too. And then I went to look at the detail of the business opportunity. And I lost the will to live because the sheer quantum of information to wade through. I mean, I was in the middle of this bumper Tuesday, so I didn't have time that day. And, and I think if you don't strike while the iron's hot, I'll probably never go back to that. But I did flirt with a biz op on Tuesday. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I flirted with a biz op on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you. I mean, it's so interesting, isn't it? Because um, there's something that Pete's involved in at the moment, which is um, something laminate timber, which has got lots of benefits. It's easy to put up. You can put it up in winter. It comes from Canada, so they know how to put things up in winter. It's much cheaper. It's very um, what's the word? Ecology, ecological. Mm, it's sound. Green. Yeah, yeah. But instead of just telling me the bear, you know, he he's firing all this information at me, and it's it's the same kind of thing, isn't it? You don't need all the technical stuff. You just need to know what the three main benefits are. And then that will convert any sale. If you've got an offer that converts with three main benefits, it does this, this, and this. Do you want some or what? That's how easy it should be. Mm. But people try and uh, prove the benefits by giving you the information instead of just give, telling you what the benefits are. Well, it's interesting in the 45 minute video, which is quite a long time for me to pay attention to a video. The first 10 minutes, I mean, and the video was by a nurse, a nurse, so somebody with some medical thing, and it is a medical product, which I think I'll probably use for the rest of my life because it's quite a good product. And you think, you know, when you're born again about a product, you might as well sell it at the same time because people are going to say, oh, how have you made that magical transformation in your health, blah, blah, blah. But um, the first 10 to 15 minutes was what everybody always does in videos, which I loathe. It wasn't so much her building her cred as her telling her story. And the woman had had three car accidents. And, you know, I was almost lost patience with her because it's like, for heaven's sake, woman, what on earth have you done in your life to have three? Ca- I mean, who has three car accidents? I was almost lost. Them. And then, of course, she gets in, eventually she gets into the miraculous healings that go on. And I thought, oh, well, now you're talking. Why didn't you start with this? Yeah, you need to grab people's attention. Oh, it's just, just very impatient. If I'm just very impatient. That's all it tells oh, me. Yeah, just, just, give me just give me the info. <laughs> Because that's not anybody. That's not how anybody teaches anybody to run a webinar. No, it isn't. No, you have to grab people's attention first. The well, th- th- that's not how we're taught. We're taught to do all of this cred building, and oh, it's like oh. I'm no, no, you're d- actually a webinar that sells always has to have a very big hook at the beginning and the hook is what's in it for the person well it must have had some hook otherwise i wouldn't have stuck through that so i must have known beforehand that i was quite motivated by what i thought the product was already doing for me if that makes sense but yeah interminable (laughs) amounts of information uh is off-putting and that's a lesson for us all yeah don't don't bore people out of your business opportunity no that's right and that happens when you go networking as well people give you all the features and none of the benefits well, it's interesting because this morning my New Zealand client was saying to me, uh, and I'll be subtle because she doesn't like me gabbing about her, which is fair enough. Um, we were talking about when people ask you, what do you do? I, I go, I don't even bother to answer that question anymore. It's none of their business. And it's not, it's not what lights me up. I, answer, I, I say, why don't we talk about, you know, I always say, tell me about yourself. And then they don't have to tell me about their work if they don't want to. And I now just tell them something interesting that's going on in my life instead of what I do. I mean, it's just such a limiting question. And I know it's designed to get us over the, the awkward social you know, bit at the beginning until we find something in common. But it isn't the best place to start often, is it? No, not with people who aren't normal. Yeah, people who aren't normal. <laughs> yes, people who don't have a job. Anyway. Yeah. Tell me who or what's impressed you. Well, I got I resisted fiercely for at least five days a new software tool today. This five week. days, Nicola, steady. <laughs> oh no, it was. I kept saying, No, you don't need it, go away. 
get, and I, you know, but obviously they were retargeting me by um, the fact yes. that I did their yes. sales page, yes. and I did their yes. order form, and everything. And it was um, a, it was a good deal. It was basically pay two hundred quid for a lifetime license, and you get a thirty day trial of two other things, which you don't have to stay with. But the thing that they were selling was so compelling for me I kept being drawn back to it when I saw their remarketing ads and it was a thing that enables you to find you know when you set up a, I'm going to bore you from a brief minute when you set up a Facebook ads you should really set up an ad group for each interest so for example you should run one ad to Frank Kern's followers and one ad to Marie Folio's followers and you should test but most people don't have the budget to do that because each of those ad groups takes a ten dollar minimum budget so if you get $100, you can test 10 different interests. So what most people do is they bung two or three or even 20 or 50 interests together, and then they see that if their ad works, if they get clicks and if they get leads. But the problem is then you don't know which of those interest groups converted to leads. And what this software does is it not only helps you tell which interest groups convert to your desired outcome, but it then takes those interest groups and it fires off loads of other ideas that you really thought of yourself. Mm. So pretty compelling practical tool, I thought. And for 200 quid for a lifetime license, I thought I'm going to get my money's worth out of that. I mean, it's going to save me, me and my clients more than 200 quid. A po- Are you going uh, to tell us what it's called? Uh, it's called connect.io. Oh, you've mentioned that before. No, I haven't. It's different. It's oh. different. The other, the other one that had a very similar name was something about sales software. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, um, can't remember what that was, but yeah, sure, right. It did have a very similar name. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I was pretty confident that I'd get my money back on that. So it became a, no, a no-brainer purchase eventually. But I did try and resist for a long time. And was it two hundred quid or two hundred dollars? Uh, 200 quid once the conversion rate was taken. Yeah, they're, they're quite close to each other. And they're based in Europe as well, so they, there was VAT on top, which was painful. Ah, always yeah. a bummer, yeah. yeah. Right, so I'm going to tell you a lovely story which I saw on Facebook this week, and I'm going to read it aloud for the purposes of delighting the listeners who may not have heard of it or read it. I know you have, unfortunately, but I'm, I'm doing it for a purpose, which is um, something brilliant happened on the back of it. So it's the story of the, the, miss- the missing woman mystery solved. A group of tourists spent hours on Saturday night looking for a missing woman in Iceland, only to find her amongst their own search party. The group was travelling through Iceland on a tour bus and stopped near a volcanic canyon. Soon there was word of a missing passenger. The woman, who had changed her clothes, didn't recognise the description of herself and joined in the search. But the search was called off at about 3am when when it became clear that the missing woman was in fact accounted for and searching for herself. I found that absolutely hilarious. Well, if that's not the funniest thing we've read forever, the, be- the best thing I love even better is that in sharing this um, little newspaper cutting, there was a comment from a Facebook friend called Tatiana Peshkin. I don't know whether she's in our podcast group. I hope she is. She said, well, aren't we all looking for ourselves? Oh, very deep. Yes, we are, Tatiana. Yes, we are, is my and, answer. And, and, I thought she improved the story, to be honest. Aren't we all looking for ourselves? Yes, we are. <laughs> and we can, we can mislead ourselves by changing our clothes midway through an activity. <laughs> <laughs> and then she wouldn't be, the first, we wouldn't be the first person to do that, quite frankly, would we? I mean, oh, how I funny know. is that? Well, what's the lesson? Don't describe people by what they're wearing. But I suppose that's all you can do with a, with a stranger. Anyway, it's funny. Yeah, they're a very good story. It Thank is a great know. story, but T- Tatiana improved it. Yeah. Okay, that's us then. So, All right. thank you very much. See you Okay, see ya. Yeah. Bye. Bye. It's a brand new day. You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. Bye.